This is the first video of Django Web Framework course for beginners, which will be divided into several parts that should cover the basics. Then we will create several projects together, like weather app, um, a news app. Also, we will create a more advanced application using Google OAuth to fetch emails from scratch. Okay, so we have a lot to do and let's get started. Now, the prerequisites to learn Django is your Python knowledge. And if you see yourself as an intermediate Python programmer, you won't find any problems following along and learning Django. Okay, so what is Django? Django is a Python-based web framework that allows you to quickly create efficient web applications. It's also called Batteries Included Framework because Django provides built-in features for everything including Django admin interface, default database, which is uh, SQLite 3, and many other features that makes Django a great framework that cares about the whole administrative aspect of the project while giving you the space and time to concentrate on creating the application itself and not to worry too much about repetitive tasks. When you're building a website, you always need a similar set of components, a way to handle user authentication, like signing in, signing out, sign up for new users, uh, you're also going to need a management panel for your website, forms, a way to upload files, etc. So Django gives you ready-made components to use, which is great for rapid development. So why Django? Django is a rapid web development framework that can be used to develop fully fleshed web applications in a short period of time. It's also easy um, to switch database in Django framework. Basically the standard or the default database is SQLite 3, but you can change the engine. You can make it PostgreSQL or SQL Alchemy if you want. It has a built-in admin interface, which makes easy to work with it. And finally, Django is a fully functional framework that requires nothing else. In fact, it has thousands of additional packages available for use. Let me talk in brief about the Django architecture. So Django is based on something called MVT or Model View Template Architecture, which is a design pattern for developing a web application. MVT structure has three components, as you can see on the screen. It has the model, it has the view and the template. So the model here, uh, which is responsible for maintaining your data, it's the logical data structure behind the entire application and is represented by a database, generally relation databases such as MySQL or PostgreSQL. And the view is the user interface, what you see in your browser when you render a website. Usually it's represented by HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Jinja. And Jinja is uh, the main template language in Django. And finally, we have the template, which consists of static parts of the desired HTML output, as well as some special syntax describing how dynamic content will be inserted. And I know this is theoretical, but once we get to install Django and work with it, the idea will be clearer. All right, so let's go ahead and start installing Django. So first of all, you will need to have Python 3 installed on your system, obviously. If it's not installed, just go to python.org. And you can find, so this is the main page. Uh, go to downloads and you get immediately even here uh, Python 3.9. This is the latest uh, version 3.9.1. So you can download it there. Don't worry. It's super simple to install it. Once you get Python installed, we will need uh, pip installed. So before you install pip on Windows uh, or Mac or Linux, you need to check if pip is already installed. So let's type this following command. We will type pip help. So if pip responds, like you can see on the screen, then pip is already installed. Otherwise, there will be an error saying that the program could not be found. And pip is automatically installed with Python uh, 2.7, I think, and Python 3.4. Pip also comes with the virtual env and py env for a virtual environment, which will lead me to the next point, which is installing virtual environment. This is not mandatory, but you can do it if you like. This will allow to edit the dependency that your system generally wouldn't allow. 
and also keep your project in a box, metaphorically speaking, of course, um, from the general settings of your system. So this way, when you install the dependencies for uh, that specific project you're working on, it doesn't get installed globally on your system, but only inside your virtual environment. And let me create a folder, Django one, we'll open that with Visual Studio Code. And let's install virtual environment together. So pip install virtual env like that. For me, it's already installed, but you might have a um, different result. So we will type virtual env space env underscore site, for example. Can be any name that you want. And you can see immediately that it has created a folder uh, called env underscore site or uh, the name that you have uh, given to your folder. Okay, perfect. So um, if we will click on env site, um, you will have scripts, you will have lib, include. Uh, don't worry about all of that. Uh, what we are interested in is to get inside. So let's change directory or cd to env underscore site. And if you make dir or ls, so we have the components which are inside here, include libscripts, um, tcl and license.txt. And what we're interested in is the folder script. So we will change directory to script. Then um, if you will make uh, dir or ls uh, for list, you will find that uh, you have activate. So if you just run activate, it should work and you will be inside your virtual environment. You can run your application inside that virtual environment. Um, feel free to do it. I won't be doing it, but I just wanted to show you how to do it. Now the most interesting part, how to install Django. So still inside our command or terminal, we will type pip install Django. Okay. And once Django is installed, you will need to initiate a project. So uh, we are inside a folder called Django one. And what we're going to type is Django dash admin space start project in one word space and your project name. So let's give our project name of Mega Man, for example. So the project name will be called Mega Man and Django has created a Mega Man folder on the left side right here. And if we will uh, enter Mega Man, we can find that we have a folder called Mega Man, so a second folder called Mega Man, and a file called manage.py. So let's start by manage.py. Let me uh, show you what is manage.py. Editing this file is certainly a very bad idea because it contains a script, uh, as you can see here, that we can use to perform some useful operations on the web application or site. So definitely something that you might want to avoid uh, doing is editing anything. And inside our second Mega Man, we have a bunch of files. We have init.py, asgi, settings, urls, and whisky.py. Init.py, um, this is to tell you that the project, whatever the project name is, is a Python package, which is a collection of different packages or Python files that work together. Next, you have ASGI and WSGI. You don't need to worry too much about these two files, but basically these two files will help your app in terms of production if you decided to deploy your application. Settings, um, this is a file that contains all the settings for our web application. And you remember I was telling you about um, uh, changing the database you have the engine by default is SQLite 3 and if you want to change that you can simply change to PostgreSQL, SQL Alchemy or any ORM system. This is the general settings for your application. Django created this for you so you won't be worried about any of the settings. Um, for example, this secret key right here you can uh, avoid that when you deploy it in time of production you don't want to show that must be um, kept away. Also, debugging mode should be set to false uh, in time of production, all right? Installed apps and when we'll create our app, uh, we will edit uh, the name of the app here in installed apps. So Django knows that 
there is a new app created and that uh, the settings should take this app in consideration. The last file is urls.py uh, and this takes care of the routing to different URLs based on user's request. So depending on the user's input, he or she can see a different uh, outcome or a different route or a different URL basically. All right, so let's just close this and open the terminal. And in order to run your project, you will have to use the manage.py, this one that we have talked about, followed by another command that will show you how to do it. So we are inside Django 1. We need to access Megaman. So cd Megaman. We need to type Python, then manage.py, followed by a command called run server. So we have no issues. 17 unapplied migrations and we'll talk about this later so now the server is uh, basically listening on port 8000 so if you will copy this url or simply hit control and click okay all right the install worked successfully congratulations you are seeing this page because debug equal to true is in your settings file and you have not configured any URLs. So you get here the Django documentation, tutorial, Django community, and the Django documentation is really awesome. I mean, it's very well written. You can learn a lot from uh, the official documentation of Django. All right, so this will conclude the first part where we have installed pip, set up the virtual environment, installed Django, and got it up and running the next video we will create our first application i will see you soon be safe